Okay, we're gonna go down and uh, check that coon, make sure he's dry enough to go into the freezer. And uh, if he is, then I'll show you how to fold them so that they don't get freezer burned. And also we'll show you how to uh, just kind of make do with what you have for uh, putting them in the freezer. If you have uh, a lot of coons to do, the easiest way to do it will be to fold them like I show you and uh, also to uh, lay some lath or some one by material down in there so that you got your first row of hides in the bottom and then lay the boards across them and then stack the other hides across the opposite way so you can get a little bit of airflow in there and you can just stack a big old freezer like I'm going to show you here clear full of coon hides. Now well, the dog heard something in the bushes there. And I was probably the goat. But he'll find out. And I got a nice big by the house. That was good to get rid of that thing. Okay, here we are. There's a measuring device that I've got on the wall here. Goes from the screw up there, comes all the way down. And you can see that, maybe you can see it. I've got them, there's a medium, extra large, 2XL, 3XL, 4XL, and 5XL. If it goes over a 5XL, it's a really big coon. And they'll pick that up pretty easy too. Okay. Now, this is my... What I use when I'm uh, butchering chickens. I set the carcasses up here with the fan on them to get the water evaporated off of them. I'm going to get this off the freezer so we can get that coon hide in. I can see that it's pretty dry. I'll show it to you here in just a minute. This is some brown sugar that was no good. I'll use that for making a coon bait. And uh, here's our coon. Yeah, he's good and dry now. Okay. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put this up on its little uh, tripod so that you can see I'm doing and uh, it'll make it a little more understandable for you I'm pretty sure I'll make sure that I can get this all in here for all right here's a board I keep out here just for this reason Do we we'll lay our coon on his back? We we'll pick up the back legs here. Here's the tail, so that's going to go right in the middle here, like this. We we'll get his back legs all so that they're nice and level. Because what you want is to have no uh, skin, fat, or anything showing if you're going to in the freezer like this. So the first thing we do is we fold the leg up like that, and like that, and we fold the tail up. We fold the head back about the width of the head plus the ears, and then another inch or two, and then fold it all the way up like that on top of itself. And that will make sure that none of that head or like that freezer burn. 
You can use a plastic bag, you can just set them right here on the board or something so that they don't get anything else on top of them while they're freezing. I just set them in boxes or I use bags or whatever, but this box is just the right width. And I'll lift this up to get here. So anyhow, that's the way he's going in. And you'll find that uh, when your fur comes out and you're ready to flesh it, all you got to do is let it hang by the tail for a little bit and a fan on it and it'll thaw right out and you're able to uh, put him on the fleshing beam. If I decide to flesh this one, I will let you know. I think what I'm going to do is just sell them as is and see what they're offering. Now I'm going to set you over here. We'll open up this freezer. That's all there is to it. My fan back here is a pretty big floor fan. And usually when I have hides hanging off of the ceiling here, I've got these nails spaced out properly so that my stretchers all fit on it. I can get this fan back over here in on top of a bucket or anything so it's blowing across all the fur out here also i can uh get this wood burning stove going over here a blower motor out of a uh, grain bin and i'll get it going and it'll just circulate that warm air off of that wood burner there being at a pretty constant temperature which if you want to Fur at a normal rate, on it much over 65, but you know that's an individual choice there. If you have it over that 65 mark, you may want to watch it a little closer. Okay, well, I've had these things here full, and back behind that door over there, there's another five rows of two by fours with nails in them well that's where i keep the long fur the uh, short fur like the coons and pops, like that out here for the most part and uh, everybody that comes in has a different colored string and their name is attached to that color for the duration of the uh, trapping year and that works well so has what and that works for them also. Okay, there's a fly trap. We won't need that up here much longer. And I will get in here and get this cleaned out a little bit. A lot of this stuff belonged to an old neighbor of mine. And he was just really a gentleman that I'll tell you all about old George sometime. He was just a real gentleman and, and served in the war and uh, stuff. So, anyhow, that's where we're and uh, my fur sheds like here a little bit. And all my stuff are back in that room back there now because I don't keep them out here because I don't use them during the off season. This coon here would be the, as close to an off season animal that I would uh, probably even refer to it as an off-season animal because he's just right at the start of the season. And I want to make sure that we have good prime fur when we sell it because the fur markets are down this year and top dollar you're going to want to make sure that the uh, animals are fully prime. They got good guard hair, the hides are white, not gray or not black or not blue all that kind of stuff. Now this thing here a friend of mine built for me for a hundred dollars. Welded it all, got it all going. It's a three-ton hoist. I use it to uh, butcher cattle, 
hogs, deer, uh, just about any bigger game animal that you can think of has been on that hoist. Right here is my kill cones for when I'm butchering meat chickens. And I, my knives that I cut, cut the throat with is right there. I'll bring them in, clean them up, sanitize them, and then sharpen them again before each season. Had the goat out here. He got this all pretty well opened up for me. I can see stuff that I hadn't seen in a while. I did see that that cast iron pot right there was busted. That got busted when a uh, post office guy got stuck down here one day. He hit this concrete embankment over here. You just barely see it in there, but it goes around a circle. It used to be a well. and. Uh, the rear end of his truck came over and it hit that and busted it. He said, what do I owe you for that? And I said, you ain't got enough money for that because old George gave me those two things. And I'm gonna see if I can't maybe get that thing welded by one of the local guys who's pretty good with cast iron. Because I know I'm not that good with cast iron and I don't wanna but I don't know where it went to now. Got some wax in these when I was to my traps a couple years ago. Looking to see if that cast iron thing was in here, but it's not. Oh well. It's over here someplace, I know, because nothing just way over here. We got stuff here that's been here for a long time, unless one of the kids was hauling you know, junk out of here for me one time. He might have threw it on his trailer, I don't know. The wolf. I guess that was just about this uh, coon episode. I the flesh in. I don't think I will. I talked with the guy that does and he's not ready to take any now. So I'll just throw him in the freezer that I get ready to take him to market. A buyer that threw up in Hastings I will just take him out to date the comb him real good and have him a straight uh, position completely flat and up there I'll comb him again just before I set to uh, give a bid on him okay well I think that'll about do it and cranes are really heavy so I know the cold weather is coming all we can do is get ready for it I was splitting wood all day stacking wood all day and making sure we were ready for the cold. So to paint outdoor wood burner. And uh, just want to get a like a hundred like the metal is back there on it. Trying to see that. And that ain't too bad. I'm gonna get in there and clean that out a little bit. I don't know how that stuff got in, even what it is. Huh. Well, I'll clean that all out and I just put these in new last year and they're in pretty shape. A little rough there on the bottom, but I think it'll be alright for this year. It isn't all we carry on. This is where we clean the ash out down here. These are the tools for scraping the ash out. And this thing here, thing on top and the bottom, and it's used for 
uh, turning the logs and started the, the front room in the uh, fireplace getting pretty and the wife asked if I'd get one going for her and I said sure so we got one already I'm feeling the and gourds out here are just about on their leg if that weather turns as bad as it's going to all over here all edible pumpkin and birds and we got to step around the bottom okay i guess we'll just call that a wrap hope you enjoyed this uh, video on the coon if you got any questions just shoot them to me and i'll see if i can answer them